Hello, and welcome back to A Quick Look, a pop culture show where I'll be taking you through the biggest headlines in entertainment and current events. I'm Zoe Jewell, and today's show is going to be my predictions on the major four categories at the 2024 Grammy Awards, which is this Sunday, February 4th, I believe, in Los Angeles. Let's get into it because this is music's biggest night. We've had the Golden Globes, we've had the Emmys, we have the Oscars coming up in about six weeks, but this Sunday we're focusing on the music. Trevor Noah is coming back to host the show. I believe this is his third time in a row hosting, though I could be wrong on that exact number, but I believe it's his third time hosting. Has done a good job the last few times he hosted the show. A lot of stars are expected to show up, a lot of big names nominated in the big major categories. Um, just some housekeeping news uh, so that people don't freak out on Sunday when he's not there, but Travis Kelsey will not be able to attend the Grammy Awards with his girlfriend Taylor Swift because he will be arriving in Las Vegas in order to prepare and get ready for the Super Bowl, which is the next week after the Grammys. So if you're like, where's where's Travis Kelsey? Why is he not with, with Taylor Swift celebrating with her? Or I guess being there with her in case maybe she does win a couple awards. Uh, the reason is because he has to prep for one of the biggest games of his entire life. Um, okay, lots of categories at the Grammys. If you've ever watched the show or know anything about the Grammys, I mean, too many categories to even cover. Uh, in fact, I think I think they actually have two different like shows. They have like the a uh, ceremony. I think the during the day prior to like the actual main event, in order to go through all the categories that are like maybe not as interesting to viewers or not as sort of like I don't know popcorn blockbustery type. Um, and uh, and so they they save like the more exciting categories for the actual televised broadcast. So we're not going to get into everything because, like I said, too much to get into. They break it down by genre, pop, country, rap, R and B. So we're just focusing on the four major categories, which are record of the year, song of the year, album of the year and best new artists. Now, a lot of people, I think for a long time, have been confused as to why there is record of the year and song of the year and what the difference is between the two because a lot of the same songs get nominated in both categories. I will explain. So record of the year essentially rewards or acknowledges the performers of the song. And then also I believe like the producers and the sound engineers and everything that goes into actually like creating the thing you listen to with your ears, like the, the musical side of the song. Song of the year, as you can maybe imagine, rewards the actual songwriting, the lyrics of the song. So sometimes you will see a song get nominated in record of the year that isn't in song of the year, maybe because it's not the most like interesting song in terms of the writing and the lyrics, but it has a great beat, production value, et cetera, et cetera. That's why it's a record of the year and then vice versa. Maybe a song is very beautifully written, amazing words, but doesn't have the production value required to be nominated in record of the year. But a lot of songs end up in both categories. So that's just the difference between those, those two in case you were confused. Okay, let's get into the first category, which is record of the year. Here are the nominees. John Batiste for Worship, Boy Genius, Not Strong Enough, Miley Cyrus, Flowers, Billie Eilish, What Was I Made For, Victoria Monet, On My Mama, Olivia Rodrigo, Vampire, Taylor Swift, Antihero and SZA Kill Bill. Okay, first of all, love the female representation in this category. Love, only one man nominated. You'd love to see it. Um, I really feel like my heart is telling me Billie Eilish will win this 
for What Was I Made For, which was obviously, if you don't know, it was the song featured in Barbie, in a very pivotal scene in Barbie, very emotional song. And I feel like because Barbie has had such a moment this year, it's such a, like a cultural touch point for so many of us. And that song is obviously being recognized in at, at the Oscars, all, all these different things. I just, I feel like the momentum is in Billie Eilish's favor, but wouldn't be surprised if Taylor Swift wins for Antihero. Wouldn't be surprised if SZA wins for Kill Bill, which was another really big song. And honestly also wouldn't be surprised if Miley Cyrus wins for Flowers. I know that's like naming a lot of different people, but I still think I'm going with Billie Eilish on this one. Okay, Song of the Year, which again, as I mentioned before, rewards the songwriters. I'm not gonna read all of the songwriters because <laughs> there's a lot of, um, a lot of people, um, but I will read these songs. So you have A and W, which was performed by Lana Del Rey, Antihero, Taylor Swift, Butterfly, John Batiste, Dance the Night, Dua Lipa, Flowers, Miley Cyrus, Kill Bill, SZA, Vampire, Olivia Rodrigo, and What Was I Made For, Billie Eilish. Again, this is a tough one because Taylor Swift has never won a Grammy for Song of the Year, which I honestly think is pretty crazy considering the fact that I think her biggest strength as an artist, and I feel like what we most talk about when it comes to Taylor is her songwriting and how great of a songwriter she is. But she's never won this award before. Now, I don't believe Antihero is like her best written song ever, though I do think it it is very well written. So part of me wants to, wants to go with Taylor and say that she's gonna take home this award. I could see What Was I Made For taking both record and song of the year. That wouldn't shock me. But I don't know, my gut is kind of telling me Antihero is going to win this one. Maybe it's my bias creeping through, but I think I'm going to go with that one. Though they're all such great songs. And honestly, if Vampire wins, Olivia Rodrigo, like that song is, that song is good. Um, okay. Best new artist. I'm always, I've always been interested in this category because I wonder what the qualifications are to be considered a best new artist because I think a lot of these artists have been around for a while. They just haven't had recognition in the way that they do now. Um, so this one, th this category has always been a little funny because you're like, wait, how is this person considered a new artist? It's, I feel like it's a subjective category, but anyway, I guess all these categories are subjective categories. Here are the nominees for best new artist. Gracie Abrams, Fred Again, Ice Spice, Jelly Roll, Coco Jones, Noah Kahn, Victoria Monet, and The War and Treaty. I think this one's locked up by Ice Spice, who has had a very, very big year this year. Obviously, she did a collaboration, a remix of the song Karma with Taylor Swift. Anytime you're going to be associated with Taylor Swift, that's going to really... Uh, up your your profile and people are going to really get to know you very quickly i think like if there was to be a spoiler in this category it would be either jelly roll or noah khan noah khan had a really big year this year um with stick season that song was huge but i'm thinking it's going to go to ice spice um all right final category of the of the big four album of the year here are the nominees. Shouldn't be surprising considering the other categories we, we have gone through. But John Batiste, World Music Radio, Boy Genius, The Record, Miley Cyrus, Endless Summer Vacation, Lana Del Rey, Did You Know That There's a Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard, Janelle Monet, The Age of Pleasure, Olivia Rodrigo, Guts, Taylor Swift, Midnights, and SZA, SOS. <clears throat> Again, I may be extremely biased here, but I think it's gonna go to Taylor Swift. And I'm of like many minds about this because on one hand, Taylor Swift, she's, she's won album of the year three times for Fearless, 1989 and Folklore. Do I think Midnight's, is Midnight's one of my top five favorite Taylor Swift albums? 
I don't, I, I don't think so, actually. But it's hard to ignore the impact that album has had on our culture in the last, well, I mean, since it came out in, in late 2022, but really within the last six months, eight months since the Eras tour took off in, in spring of last year. Is there a bigger star on the planet? Is was there a bigger tour than the Eras tour? Was I mean, she is she is the woman of the moment. She is the person of the moment. She is time person of the year. I I just I don't see how this goes to somebody else. I I think if we were just speaking truly based off of like what is the best album? SZA probably had the best album, probably deserves this award. But I just Taylor Swift is so popular and, and the album of the year tends to reward the most popular album in a way, not necessarily the best album, but it's, it's what are the most people, cause everyone has to vote, right? All, all the voters. And it's like, what's the album that the most amount of people are going to enjoy? It's probably Taylor Swift and Nights, which would be a historic win for Taylor Swift. And uh, if my nominations or my predictions are correct, all women will sweep the four major categories, which would be pretty great. I would, I would love it. Um, so yeah, that's my predictions. Those are my predictions for the 2024 Grammys in the major four categories. Would love to know what you guys think is going to win in the comments below. Do you think Taylor Swift's going to sweep? Will there be some upsets? Who's going to come out on top? And then if you have any predictions for the other categories as well, let us know. And we'll be back on Monday recapping the Grammys, what went down, the highs, the lows, the shocks, the snubs, the things that maybe didn't surprise us, all of it. Um, as always, guys, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you next time.